the deep web is uh, things that are not accessed through the open web. So when you open up a browser, you no longer type www, uh, but that's implicit. That is the World Wide Web. That is the open web. Yeah. That's what yeah. you're accessing when you do that, uh, when, whenever you open up a browser window. Um, the deep web access is accessed through uh, usually something like Tor, uh, which is, uh, at this point, it, it's gone through many uh, amalgamations, but at this point it's basically just a separate browser. Um, it stands for the Onion Router. Um, so it, Tor, in essence, uh, just routes your traffic through other computers in other countries, other participants in the Tor uh, network um, until it exits somewhere else. And you're accessing things that are not, you wouldn't type in, for example, to that browser. Um, I mean, you could, you could type in www.google.com into a Tor browser and your traffic would do, 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 right? Um, and then pop out somewhere else and then blah, 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 make its way back, right? Um, and you'd go to Google. You'd just see a Google page just like anything else. And it would be essentially just as quick as accessing it uh, via your, your regular browser. But if you're in China or something uh, and you want to read something that maybe the Chinese government doesn't want you to read, or you're in Syria, for example, where I have friends who have wanted to read how the world felt about what was going on in their country uh, when there were all those uh, pro-democratic protests happening. Uh, you can't access that through your ISPs. You need your traffic to be routed out and then back in. Does that make sense? In order to even read like the New York Times. Yeah. So you can access the New York Times. That's that's one of the things you can access um, through Tor. So that that's going to be that and other things are broadly uh, the deep web. You're accessing it through uh, both more directly and more indirectly. Um, so you're not accessing it just through your ISP. Um, you're accessing it through this routing network. I think that's the best way I can explain it. Um, and it's not a big deal. So yeah, you can get the New York Times through Google. You and I can. We can just Google the New York Times, and then their website will pop up. Yeah. Um, but there are people for whom, whom that is not true because their government blocks that. So if they wanted to access it, they would have to access it through Tor or something like that. Um, and there are other browsers and programs that operate the same way it's just tor is the most popular and easiest to use and i would say like the most functional of them uh it's not completely secure it's not completely private um but anything accessed that way you can kind of just put in the category of deep web um does that make sense yeah and then yeah. the the dark web is <laughs> I mean, not, not not to be too reductionist about it, but it's all the illegal shit on the deep web. Okay. Okay. Um, and you you can't Google that. Um, <laughs> you definitely cannot Google those things. But like, so the the deep web and the dark web uh, <coughs> have like a phone book, uh, basically. Um, it's dark fail. Um, is the name of this website. Um, it's D-A-R-K. I don't want to spell it out. Um, the extension is dot .fail. It's, anyway, uh, yeah, so it, you don't have, like, dot .coms. Yeah. Uh, the web addresses look different. But we have, like, a, a, essentially just a phone book because you can't Google this stuff. So there's dark fail, and you go on dark fail, and it tells you what websites are what websites are up and running and which are not and provides safe links to lots of things around the deep web and dark web so for example uh dark dot fail i think actually you can probably access this um in a regular browser 
I'm gonna check. Yeah, so if you, I, 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 I'm sure you can share this with anyone and nobody will get in trouble for me saying this. Um, it's just dark.fail um, is the address. And if you go there, <clears throat> you see uh, is a darknet site online. And I don't know who runs this. Nobody really knows who runs this. Um, but it's just a phone book, essentially. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see... Um, you know, WikiLeaks, links to WikiLeaks, links to links to the Pirate Bay, um, 8chan, that's quite funny, um, Facebook, um, and you'll notice the extensions are .onion, um, which tells you that this is not on the open web. Um, so there's some VPNs. Here's the New York Times, um, and their address looks quite different. You should probably just like go there and look and have that on your screen. Uh, but anyway, uh, that that's like our phone book, uh, and because because these, uh, especially the dark web sites. Um, have to uh, move their servers and move their addresses and everything at relative, like, yeah, at relatively frequent frequent intervals. Um, you you can't just like have a link that works. Um, it's it's gonna change, um, and sometimes the one you have goes down. There's usually a main one, but sometimes that goes down, and you need to use a different one. So this this phone book is an excellent resource for that and because other people will post links and be like this is the new link to whatever website and then it's a phishing website and then they steal all your bitcoin um so <laughs> that's that's like the 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 starting point on the monopoly board is dark fail and a, a tor browser and then you can just access whatever you want I hope that helps. But yeah, the difference between the deep web and the dark web is one is like shit that's illegal everywhere and the other is like just accessing things that maybe your country doesn't want you reading. Yeah. If you want a really simple explanation of the difference. Okay. You can go to dark fail. Go to dark fail. How, how do I do that? Open it up. Open up a browser window. <laughs> Type dark dot fail. You're not going to get in trouble. It's fine. And you can see there's a little phone book there. Uh, yep. Unless your country has blocked it. Has your country blocked it? No. No. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. And you can see those web addresses are kind of weird looking. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. It's all trust based. Um, and then there's a Reddit. It's probably the the like first thing on the dark fail website, or it's relatively high up. Um, there's a Reddit for the dark web called Dread. Is it like Dread it? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, um, and the, I I have found so many really interesting conversations about things that you just couldn't discuss on the open web that would be taken down. Um, so I think I was telling you when all those, when not all those people, but when people were dying from vaping here in America uh, this last fall, uh, everybody's like, ah, it's, of course vaping is terrible. You're just inhaling weird stuff. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this is weed. Like people are vaping cannabis because that's a really unregulated market and like quite often it's still illegal like it's perfectly legal in California and Washington and a number of other states but for the, the majority of uh, American states it's still illegal and I was like these people are just buying black market weed vape cartridges that has to be what it is um, because vaping has vaping nicotine has been around for far too long for this to just come out of the blue out of nowhere, and it's largely regulated by the FDA. Um, so I went on Dread. Um, I was curious. I didn't 
like the I, I didn't re- trust the information I was being given because it was kind of haphazard and struck me as um, you guys call it Chinese whispers um, or like the game telephone or something like you could tell that something had been lost along the way. It was very patchy and motley. So I went on Dread where I found uh, cannabis producers, cannabis vape producers having a discussion about what it could be that they had added and how to stop it um, and how to recall their illegal vape cartridges. It was a really responsible conversation. Uh, Months before journalists or the CDC or anyone else felt comfortable saying that not only was this a problem with cannabis cartridges, but it was a problem with uh, vitamin E acetate used to extract the THC from the cannabis. I knew about it uh, because they were having they they had figured out the producers had figured out what it was that they had changed yeah. by having these yeah. open conversations on dread. Um, and of course, they, they, these people are just trying to make weed vapes. Like they're not trying to kill anyone. <laughs> they were horrified. They were like, "What have we done?" Uh, and they figured it out within a few days, um, and it had instituted plans for how to get these things off the market and other ways to uh, extract the THC, safer ways that wouldn't make people sick and wouldn't kill people, um, other than using vitamin E acetate. So yeah, it, it was. It's a great, great resource for things like that. Um, I I love it. So that's the Reddit of the dark web. And then I can't remember what else you wanted to know about. Well, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. What do you've I need? Got, to... You've got to prompt it. You want to? You, you we we we've, we've talked about the. Um, the... All, all, no, Mark, what, what I know is, is that you had you had said to me that the dark web, the deep web, is an example of anarchy in action, and I think yeah. that what so I, I I mean I guess actually what you said already maybe provides part of an example of this. It it it's an example of self regulation um, emerging without some kind of centralized authority. And I think exactly. that's the key point that because when people think about anarchy, I feel like that's probably the main objection they have is, well, how is this going to work? How do you how does this work without some sort of centralized authority to enforce contracts, for example, or to yeah. uh, enforce safety? So, and, and so and, on. And, I mean, that's, I and actually, I mean, that's, to... so, so I guess we've talked. So you so see, yeah, that, those are those are the sort of things I wanted to, to, to go over, which was how this presents an example of anarchy in action. Um, so dark fail, which I made you look at, which you were visibly uncomfortable doing. Um, but I mean, you're recording this, so I wanted to make sure people could get a look at it because they get scared. People get scared about this stuff, uh, but there's really nothing to be frightened of there. Um, <clears throat> and I think people get scared of anarchy. Dark fail works to some degree as an example of anarchy in action. Um, People wouldn't use that phone book if they started posting phishing links, right? Um, there, a few people would get screwed over and lose some money, uh, and immediately that would no longer be the bastion of trust that it is. It wouldn't be a reliable resource, and so people would stop using it. Uh, yeah, a few people might lose some money, um, before we figured it out, because you need some way to figure out that it's broken before you can say it's broken. Uh, but yeah, people would people, people simply no longer use it. It's such a wonderful resource, though, because these people seem, those who run it, um, and, and a lot of like citizens of the deep web and dark web are dedicated to the idea that we we can self-regulate and everybody should be able to access whatever they want, um, whenever they want, or read whatever they want, whenever they want. A huge number of participants in the deep web just really think that information should be available to everyone. And they're, they're human rights activists who want people in countries with repressive governments to be able to access information. 
So that's, you know, the, the noble aspect of it. Uh, and yeah, I guess dread works as an example of how these people work to correct, correct a problem in the market um, that was making people sick and people did die from it, uh, but without any prompting by any government. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they wanted to fix this because even the like horrible dark web <laughs> drug dealers uh, w want to have people to buy their drugs and don't want to be poisoning people. They just want to sell weed. Um, <clears throat> and they're uh, sharing information readily because they all share this common goal. And again, if you lose trust in you know, your weed vapes, that's bad for everyone. It doesn't, every dealer, right? So of course they're gonna share information and of course they're gonna share recipes and that sorts of thing, that sort of thing. Of course they're gonna, you know, communicate with each other because on a consumer level, what's the difference to me between, you know, if I'm buying my weed cartridges like on the street, I don't know where those came from. I don't know if they came from producer A or producer B. Um, I just know that weed cartridges are killing people. So I'm probably going to stop buying those. <laughs> so even if it was just dealer A who was using the vitamin E acetate, it's in dealer B's interest to help him out so that he can continue to have market trust and sell his weed cartridges as well. Yeah. So you kind yeah. of see it there. Um, but I, I don't think you see it anywhere so much as you do uh, on the markets, um, the dark markets. The markets are like uh, Amazon, but dark. <laughs> um, like it's, it, or eBay. Um, eBay is probably more analogous just because of the layout of yeah. the markets. Uh, you, you search for the item you wish to purchase and then uh, result comes up uh you can limit it to like uh so i'm american and let's say i wanted to buy some uh banned literature we'll use that as the example even though there's really not banned literature so let's say i wish to purchase some illegal literature so i go on the dark web and i see that somebody is selling this book that is banned in my country um I, I know that if I order it from somebody in the Netherlands, for example, uh, it's going to have to make it through customs. So I might choose to limit my search to USA to USA only. Additionally, somebody in the Netherlands might be concerned about me being angry because I didn't get my book from them because it was taken from cust by customs. So they might decide they don't ship to the United States based on our customs policy. <coughs> So you can refine your search along these ways, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and you, uh, you you find the book that you wish to purchase, and you purchase it uh, with cryptocurrency, um, whatever cryptocurrency your market allows for. And you always get this concern, and this is where it occurred to me that this is a beautiful example of anarchy in action. Um, people are like, well, what if the book was poison <laughs> or <laughs> what if the book was not the book you ordered at all <laughs> what if instead it was just like a bunch of newspapers yeah. or something yeah. else i mean that's the uh, that's, <laughs> that's the thing yeah. it's well I, I i think that's one of the main the main concerns about anarchy is how exactly are you going to enforce contracts once you know without without an authority to do so um, yeah once so you've given your money to somebody, why couldn't they just take it and run? Uh, well, and, and uh, the reason is because anarchists and people who wish to read books online are very, very clever. Uh, so we, we've figured out solutions and they're innovative solutions, but they're not actually all that difficult. They're very, very easy to manage. Um, so first of all, you don't directly pay for your book. You, your money goes into escrow where it's held by the market. So this is like if Amazon had, you had to upload a certain amount of money to your Amazon wallet before you could make a purchase. 
So you have to ensure Amazon, yes, I actually have the money. They hold on to it. And then when you get your book from Amazon, you click release funds. Um, so your money goes into escrow with Amazon. This is obviously not the way Amazon actually works. This yeah. is, if, if it worked like the dark web, um, your money goes into escrow. Now, if you receive something other than the book that you ordered, um, you hit dispute. Um, there is a dispute button and something like a finalized transaction um, button. So you can finalize and release the money or you can dispute it and say, well, uh, I only got half the book I ordered. <laughs> Um, or I got some other book, which was not the book I ordered, or it took a very long time for me to get this, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then Amazon oversees uh, the, the communication between you and the person. Um, if it looks like they did send it, um, and if they have a really good reputation, uh, then they might side with them and say, oh, well, Customs took your book. Um, or uh, if this person's been sketchy, they will throw them off the market. They will ban this vendor uh, relatively quickly. Uh, so that's, that's one of the mechanisms is just escrow, which gives you a chance to say like, well, no, this didn't happen the way I wanted it to before they ever get your money. So it's not a matter of trying to get a refund from a vendor. It's a matter of trusting your market. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, your market is only as good as it is reliable. It's only as successful as it is reliable and fair. So your market has a strong interest in being reliable and fair. Um, but then additionally, in addition to, uh, I should say, in addition to escrow, um, we're all citizens of this community. And when you finalize a transaction, you have to leave a review. Uh, so every transaction has a review. It can be as simple as saying, you know, thumbs up, uh, or you can leave comments. Most people choose to leave comments because they have such good interactions. Um, they have such good experiences. I know I have always chosen to comment on the books I have purchased on the dark web. <laughs> Um, because I want to share this experience. Um, I want my vendor to do well. Um, I want them to thrive and I want to promote people who, um, conduct business as consummate professionals, which these people always do. And I want the dark web to thrive and I want these markets to thrive. So, and it doesn't take much for me to leave a two sentence review. Yeah. Um, so if a vendor drops below, say, 95% positive reviews, uh, they will be booted from the market. Uh, different markets work differently. Um, but then additionally, uh, the, these people are very clever. And, you know, uh, this is not purely anarchistic, but uh, I hear the objection all the time, like, or I hear people say, like, the dark web is full of child pornography <laughs> or like terrifying violent things. Uh, and no, it's not. Um, my market specifically has chosen to ban the sale of uh, violent pornography, child pornography, um, or terrorist materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I, I would love to dress it up and say that you can't buy, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. Uh, I, I don't mind this going online. I would, I would love to say, you can't buy black tar heroin on this market, but you can. You can buy stolen credit card numbers. Um, you can buy fake identities. Um, there aren't a lot of sales on most of those items uh, because that's not what people are going there for, but. You, you can buy those things. So why, why have they just, chosen just to... Second. Before you oh, before go you on to why they've chosen to do that, to do that, there are two things you've mentioned that I'm a bit curious about. First of all, you said it's not purely anarchistic. And I'm, I'm a bit confused about in what I'll, sense I'll, it's I'll not purely anarchistic. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, right. Uh, but then the second thing is, is why? what's the problem with black tar heroin i mean is this i mean i don't know about i don't know what black tar heroin is uh it, it, it's not it's certainly not clean 
um, or particularly uh, like good for you heroin if you were to do heroin. Yeah. Um, it's 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 the uh, the quick and dirty of heroin. But I mean, if I, I'm allergic to opioids, so I I even if I wanted to, I couldn't do any of this heroin. But this thing happens the first time you get on a dark web market. No, no, but You're well, there, mean, and let's say you do just want to buy a book um, that's been banned in your country, or let's say you just want to buy some weed or yeah. something like that, something conventionally seen as innocuous. It It's jarring when all of the sudden at your fingertips uh, there's meth and black tar heroin for sale. It, it just oh, it, it, it makes you feel like this is seedy, this is bad. Um, and that's going to be something you have to get over because there's no good reason to be having that feeling. I, I, people try to dress this stuff up sometimes as when I say the stuff, people try to dress up um, specifically the dark web um, as uh, they, they try to couch it in terms that are better used for just the deep web. Like this is people accessing information um, this is people trying to work around their oppressive governments, and all of that is true, but that's not all it is. And I think people know that we're being a little dishonest when we say that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, no, there's you can buy a pound of meth on these websites I'm talking about. Uh, but what you cannot buy is child pornography. Uh, and it's interesting that they make this distinction. Uh, to some degree, they make this distinction because they know that if they're selling a pound of meth, only certain governments are going to be so interested in them. But if they're selling terrorist materials and child pornography, every government is going to be interested in them and trying to take them down. Uh, so that's the way it's not purely... Uh... Uh, however, there are a lot of websites that, of their own volition, choose not to sell those sorts of items because they don't want to do business with those sorts of people. I would say the majority of them do it as a conscious ethical decision, and the fact that it makes it much harder to survive as a dark market uh, plays a much smaller role. Uh, every, every page you go to on the dark web will at the bottom have like our philosophy or our commitment. Uh, this is not something that's done thoughtlessly. This is not a Facebook post. Somebody doesn't make dark fail or dread or even a market flippantly. They think about it a lot and uh, it, be it, you know, deontological utilitarian or whatever. Um, there, there is an ethical system mm -hmm. at the bottom of what they're doing. Uh, because the, you, you can't make these decisions flippantly. So, uh, yeah, there, there's that you. you I, I simply have never come across murder porn, um, weapons of mass destruction, uh, child porn, uh, anything yeah. like yeah. that anywhere on the dark web. But then you uh, think that that's because. I think it's in They're, part because yeah. survival, um, but also in part because this community would turn on people um, and wouldn't want to do business with that sort of uh, market. Uh, and then also because most of the people who engage with this sort of thing are doing it uh, at significant risk to themselves. And they, they have put thought into what sort of citizen of the dark web they want to be. Yeah. Um, and it self-regulates. And it self-regulates just fine. Uh, I'd say we are all more conscientious and decent to each other than anywhere else I have been on the internet. And it's it's because you've given us this responsibility. Well, nobody's given us this responsibility. We've taken it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And everything you do in that space is with an awareness that you have a great responsibility. Um, you have a responsibility to leave reviews so that your vendors 
uh, will continue to stay around. Uh, and bad vendors will not. Uh, they will be booted. <laughs> uh, so that because this is you, your society creating, it might be in a virtual space, but you're still creating a society and a community. And your it, it, it feels like a civic duty. Um, and it functions far better than any coercive system I've ever seen. Uh, we're all choosing to do this because yeah. we want to. Um, and it is anarchism in action. You have unregulated markets. Um, worse than that, you have markets that like governments are actively trying to thwart um, and th that have all these additional costs of operation um, just to survive. And they're not just surviving, they are thriving. It's, it's anarchy thriving to the betterment of everyone who's involved in it. Uh, and I, that, that's, to me, uh, just it should end the conversation about whether or not anarchy works. Yeah, it works. We have a millions of people community <laughs> of it actually working where real money is exchanged for real goods and very real and relevant interactions are had and it's built entirely on trust because anyone could potentially destroy anybody else's life um, or at least try to by turning them over to authorities yeah um, but that doesn't happen yeah although i mean you've kind of undermined your point there haven't you if you're if you're saying that well, part of yeah, the reason why because... it works is that people could hand others over to authorities no, I'm not um, saying that's the reason why it works. I'm saying it works in spite of that. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, but but there is a worry there because that would be one way to maintain order, right? No. How? Because you could use the fact that you can turn someone over to author to an authority. Like, if in a situation, say, where somebody wants to run off with your money, you can be like, well, if you do that, I'm going to react in this way. Oh, no, and no. Fuck you we're, up. We're, we're, we're blind. Um, I don't know the real name of my vendor and presumably they don't know my real name. And even if they did yeah. want to turn me over to an authority, um, I've not done anything illegal. Yeah. Uh, well, I've done something illegal, but not something that can be proven. So again, let's say I purchase this banned book and a vendor sends it to me. And for some reason, I'm like, well, fuck that vendor. They sent me the book that I wanted. Uh, and all the pages are there, but I'm going to dispute this transaction. That vendor has my address. They had to have it in order to mail it to me. Now it's encrypted, but whatever. They had to be able to decrypt it in order to send me this book, right? At some point, somebody had to write my address on an envelope. And now I have hit dispute this transaction. Well, if that vendor was like, I'm going to turn her over to the authorities, they cannot, uh, because you cannot get arrested for having contraband mailed to you. Uh, the reason is that would make blackmail super fucking easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like now if I was just mad at somebody, I could just mail them a bunch of illegal books um, and be like, hey, police, <laughs> this person's got a mailbox full of illegal books, right? Um, and do that so it's, it's not actually illegal for drugs or illegal books to come in the mail yeah, to you i because, see so yeah so no even in you, principle not, then the people who uh, take part in this market can't use the threat of state authority to keep other people no. in line uh no and doing so would put them at great risk yeah um so, because you're essentially confessing then to like what being a vendor um, on a dark market, <laughs> like that's not great, <laughs> um, or a purchaser on a dark market. So, uh, I mean, and there are so many other like just ingenious things that that I, I'm glad you asked that because it demonstrates that like no, this system is well thought out and fully functional. Uh, this isn't theoretical. This is happening worldwide involving vast quantities of money and uh, lots and lots of illegal books. <laughs> so the vast majority of dark markets are drugs, um, but usually the other thing you see on there is like password packs, 
to like Netflix, Hulu, like Pornhub, um, and that sort of thing. That's that's probably the second most common thing on there is like fake accounts for those things. And they work. Mm. Um, I don't know how they work. That one baffles me. I've never really looked into it, but I've definitely like reviewed the comments um, and all that. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're, they're, it is a system. It's a society where goods and services are exchanged for cryptocurrency and uh, everybody who participates does so consciously and conscientiously um, and it manages to function in spite of looming threat which is great some of the some of the vendors are really cute they even have like if you leave uh, you leave a review be it negative or positive they have like raffles for yeah. like free drugs <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they, it's or comment on their uh, sub dread because it's again just like Reddit. Um, there are subs uh, on dread. Uh, if you alert them to a problem, uh, they might send you <laughs> a thank you gift, which is lovely. Yeah, they reach out and they get that, and, and it had like this would sound like a fairy tale if not for the fact that I have been an active member of this community for a very long time now and i've seen these things play out really well mm -hmm. um yeah like every now and then somebody will just make a post and they'll be like thank you xyz vendor you, i i i told you this is a problem and you gifted me with a bunch of stuff like way to be a bro <laughs> like thank you so much um and they're real and like we're all very you have to be savvy to get here so it's not like we're easily taken in people um this this isn't you know like lame marketing that's happening i mean yeah. it, it might be lame but uh it is authentic and real could, could uh, that be a, a problem for generalizing this i mean if you're if you're using this as an example of anarchy in action obviously if you're proposing anarchy for society as a whole you have to consider the fact that people there's a lot yeah. of idiots right uh, um, no i'm not going to consider that um, i'm not going to be cynical and make proclamations i think there are a lot of intelligent people who have not been asked to rise to the occasion um i think that people live in a world where their choices make very little difference mm -hmm. and their actions make very little difference and if you put them in an environment or a society where their choices and actions made a difference they would rise to the occasion um again it's not you you have to really want it and you have to learn how to be savvy but i really don't think people who are like <laughs> ordering pounds of black tar heroin are necessarily like the creme de la creme of the mm. intellect or intelligentsia like that's not what would be let's be real um or people who are like yes give me that fake account to pornhub <laughs> for 13 cents yes <laughs> hook me up right like these are just humans they're just humans who have um gone through a a process that has made them more conscientious um i don't think they're geniuses i see so many instances of just abhorrent grammar <laughs> and like punctuation and like really unclear thinking and like i i'm not trying to say like i'm in love with every member of the dark web or anything like that or even that they all have my profound intellectual respect um i i am saying that being in this position where you're participating actively in a community where your choices uh profoundly impact your own life and the lives of others um has uh, taught people to behave a bit more thoughtfully um and made everyone a bit more savvy like if we didn't have the fda would we just be like oh yeah i'm just gonna eat that <laughs> right no no we would probably be like well what's in that um and it's a lot of work mm -hmm. do you want to ask like what's in that constantly um i think most people would say no but if what you get in exchange for asking what's in that is that safe 
um, I think I'm going to read about this. I'm going to check your reviews before I buy this. Um, is complete freedom to do with yourself what you want. I think it's I also think worth noting on that point that you wouldn't have to be asking that constantly because once you've no. found a good vendor, uh, once not even a good found... vendor or a good market, you can uh, trust well, your market. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose you could look at reviews, but I mean, once you've got something, something you trust, you don't yeah. have to constantly ask and constantly check up. So yeah, I mean, when I order something on Amazon, I look at their reviews. Of course, I do. Like straight up, just regular ass Amazon. Yeah. Um, when I order something on eBay, um, I look at the seller reviews. It's not that onerous. Um, I kind of like reading the reviews. Sometimes they're hilarious. Uh, it, it is a small cost. Um, and you're right, it's not in perpetuity. Um, when I order my books from my vendors on the dark web, I, I it's almost a point of pride how quickly and reliably they come. Um, once with an order of books, they sent me a bunch of stickers too. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's really nice of them. <laughs> they were really dope stickers too. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you, you can, you, you can rest, rest assured and usually trust your vendors. Um, it doesn't all, it does. I would love to say it works perfectly 100% of the time. It doesn't. Um, Silk Road is probably the most famous market, um, mm -hmm. dark web market, and uh, it has had multiple iterations. It's been, you know, busted up by world governments and I guess I should say international governments um, and that sort of thing. And it's also fallen to its own uh, vices on occasion. Uh, sometimes you get a bad mod effectively, right? Who's not doing their job. And sometimes uh, a market will pull an exit scam where it will take all the money that's in escrow and stop being a market. <laughs> um, and that's not cool. That's not great. Uh, that happens very, very rarely because there's a lot more in it for them to just keep running the market. Yeah. Like that would be like if Amazon was like, ha ha, we get all the money from today. Goodbye. And it's like, okay, yes, well, you could do that. Or you could continue to run and thrive yeah. for decades. Not a very good long-term strategy. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's not an issue. It and, does and happen. I mean, it, it is also, Generally, I think, important to point out. Actor, um, and the websites work to make it right. Yeah. It, it, on this, it is also, of course, important to point out that, um, Governments don't work easily. Uh, don't work perfectly either, right? Uh, yeah, so, I guess. Yeah, we're not comparing so not... a <laughs> a perfect system with an imperfect yeah. one. We're comparing a hugely flawed one with one that uh, there are very few examples of. But I think we have a good example of one here, and I think it's a hell of a lot better um, than any system we have now. It's safer and freer, and yeah, it asks more of its citizens, but uh, I'm not sure that's a bad thing. 